welcome to the channel viewers. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. What is emotional incest? Medical review by Danielle Wade. Story by Zorn Villains and Michelle R Renee Akers. <clears throat> August 24, 2022. I will leave the link in the description below. Okay, what is emotional incest? Emotional incest happens when a parent or caregiver depends on a child for emotional needs that a romantic partner would otherwise offer. Another term for it is covert incest. It does not include sexual abuse. And they always say sexual abuse demoralizes its victims covert emotional abuse grandizes its victims. The word emotional or covert means that this form of incest is not visible to others and harder to spot than incest related to sexual abuse. That's only if, viewers, it doesn't go overt. If you're around your partner long enough, you will watch this manifest in front of you. The article describes Emotional incest in more detail provides examples of behavior that may indicate emotional incest and looks at its impact on children and young children. What is emotional incest? Here we go. <clears throat> According to the American Psychological Association, Emotional incest is a form of emotional abuse. It happens when a parent or caregiver uses the child for emotional needs that they should be obtaining from their adult romantic partner. This violates the boundaries between a parent and child. Psychologists sometimes call this covert incest or enmeshment. In an emotionally incestuous relationship, the parent or caregiver depends on the child as an emotional security blanket. It means that the child has put the wants and desires of the parent first to receive the parent's approval. And this, man, this can become really possessive because if you become the partner of one of these parents, you are going to be up against it with one of these children. In some cases, the adult treats the child as if they are a love life partner. This is the whole problem because the parent surrogates the partner into a position where they actually think that they, they are the partner of the parent. However, what makes emotional incest distinct from other types is that there is no sexual contact usually. There is elements of intimate contact. I've seen them come up behind their mothers and cup them under the breasts and smell their neck and kiss their neck. Um, I've seen them kiss on the lips. They call each other um, intimate names. Honey, sweetie, babe, all this kind of stuff, which is out of context in a parent-child relationship. Emotional incest di differs from a typical close relationship between a parent or caregiver and a child. In cases of emotional incest, the closeness results from the adult putting themselves first and in the process harming the child's well-being which is a form of narcissism because they're in training the child to be emotionally attached to them a lot of um, these parents are covert narcissists they're not aware of this themselves uh, and they're using the emotional supply of the child to meet their needs 
this entrains a child um, into being connected to the parent in a way in which is not healthy, which is abusive, mol molesting really. They're molesting the child's emotions. What is the difference between emotional incest and enmeshment? The APA defines enmeshment as a relationship between two or more people in which they become involved in each other's activities and relationships too much, limiting each person's independence and sense of self. Emotional incest is a specific form of enmeshment that includes a parent or caregiver and a child. What are signs of emotional incest? According to the book Emotional Incest Syndrome, What to Do When a Parent's Love Rules Your Life by Dr. Patricia Love, relying on child for support, putting their needs before their child's, invading the child's privacy, using the child like a love life partner and feeling jealous of the child's relationships and the child feeling jealous of the parent's relationships. This all mirrors itself. This may include ta talking with the child about their relationship problems, seeking the child to console or comfort them, or asking the child for inappropriate advice, and all this has an intimate element to it, putting their needs before the child's. The caregiver may want endless praise and love from the child or to be the most important person in the child's life while at the same time hurting the child's other relationships, sabotaging the child's other relationships, invading the child's privacy. And you'll find that these children invade their parents' privacy as well. I've had them rush in through the doors, um, bedroom doors. Um, I've had mothers having to lock them out they lock them out. These are adult people, adult young men. Um, I've had parents lock them out, stop them, turn off their phones, ignore them. They are like parasites trying to find a way into the relationship space. The silly part about it is the parents will lock the doors and turn off the phones and ignore these people and then reinvigorate the covert emotional incest when you're gone, <coughs> which causes tremendous confusion, division, derision, and arguments amongst these people. A sense of betrayal, abandonment, psychological abandonment, because the partner is turning to somebody outside the covert emotional incest relationship. <coughs> They use a child like a love life partner. Sounds creepy, doesn't it? This could consist of taking the child on dates, and I've seen this, discussing their sex life, or making explicit comments about the child's body or appearance, and this is rampant. Wow. It's rampant. That's why when you meet one of these single mothers, you are going to cop opposition from these adult males like they are their partner, like they are their husband, like you are having an affair with this person and they're trying to stop it. The caregiver may also insist that the child call them names typically reserved for adult relationships and you'll hear them calling them babe, doll, honey, sweetie, um, all with intimate connotations. However, in cases of emotional incest, there is no sexual contact, usually as far as we know. Feeling jealous of the child's relationships and the child feeling jealous of the parent's relationships. When the child becomes an adult, the parent or caregiver may become envious of their romantic relationships. They may complete, compete for attention, intrude on or attempt to sabotage them. And that works both ways. A caregiver must not do all these things to engage in emotional incest. 
A relationship is emotionally incestuous if there is a consistent lack of parent-child boundaries. And this is, the, this is what I say to these women. Just set up boundaries and everything will be okay, but they won't. They want the security of the child as much as the child wants theirs. These are adult people. Caregivers who engage in this behaviour may not realise that it is harmful. Well, they do when you tell them. The child involved may feel that the relationship is simply special or that it cannot be abusive because it does not include sexual contact. No wonder the wolves are howling in the background. The dog can always smell trouble. What are the effects of emotional incest? This will be interesting. Health experts do not know how common emotional incest is. Well, I can tell you from experience, it's almost always guaranteed in a single mother home. There you go, you can work with that. Almost always guaranteed in a single parent home, if the children are living there. Guaranteed. However, psychologists in this field claim that the impact of their clients is similar to that of physical incest. And again, I'll repeat, physical incest demoralizes its victims. Covert emotional incest grandizes its victims. So they come back for more. In his book, Silently Seduced, When Parents Make Their Children Partners, psychologist Kenneth M. Adams states that emotional incest can cause A love-hate relationship with the parent or caregiver. You'll see that they're all lovey-dovey one minute and in conflict the next. Number two, feelings of abandonment toward the other parent or caregiver who has left the household or allowed the behavior to continue. Number three, difficulty identifying and fulfilling personal needs because the person is so used to caring for others. Number four, feeling inadequate and unworthy. And you'll hear the parents say this as well. I feel like I owe them. Uh, and these are grown up people. I feel like I still owe them. I feel like I'm unworthy, like I've failed as an adult. Well, if you're in covert emotional incest, you are failing as an adult. Number five, sexual dysfunction or sex addiction. Two opposite ends of the scale. Number six, compulsive behavior or addiction. You'll find that they're on medications, alcohol, weed, one or the other, or all of the above. And number six, difficulty, or seven, difficulty forming lasting intimate relationships because the covert emotional incest sabotages the relationships. Since the publication of this book, researchers have developed the Childhood Emotional Incest Scale, which aims to measure how emotional incest has affected a person during their childhood. According to the Journal of Counseling Psychology, high scores of the CIS accurately predict increased anxiety and lower levels of life satisfaction. What are the causes of emotional incest? Researchers do not understand all the causes of emotional incest. There are few studies on this subject. However, antidotal information from parapists suggests that emotional incest often happens when the other partner or spouse is not meeting the affected parent's or caregiver's emotional requirements. This may be due to, number one, relationship dysfunction or breakdown. Number two, infidelity. Number three, divorce. Number four, abandonment. Number five, bereavement. And number six, domestic abuse. 
The parent or caregiver may turn to their child for comfort as an inappropriate way to cope. Parental mental health conditions such as anxiety, depression, personality disorder, personality disorders, there's cluster A, cluster B, cluster C, and we can look at these quickly. Um, cluster A personality disorders include paranoid personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, cluster B, includes antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder, and I've seen narcissism in all of the cases that I've seen. And cluster C, avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive personality disorders. And to receive a diagnosis of a personality disorder, an individual must meet certain criteria. But there's some examples. If the caregiver um, and substance use disorder may also contribute. Most of these people are abusing substances. If the caregiver was exposed to emotional incest when they were young, they might repeat the same pattern of behaviour, believing it to be normal. What steps should a person take to recover from emotional incest? It may take a long time for someone to recognize the full impact of the caregiver's behavior. A person may idealize their parent or caregiver and have difficulty accepting the relationship was not healthy. However, acknowledging emotional incest is essential for recovery, since people often blame themselves for their parents' or caregiver's behavior it is important to recognize that no form of incest is ever the child's fault. Steps a person can take to begin healing from emotional incest. They include Number one, seeking therapy. A qualified therapist can help someone understand what happened to them during childhood and provide a judgment-free space for them to talk about it. Therapists can also help people adjust their ideas about healthy relationships. Number two, joining a support group. Some people find it beneficial to communicate with others who have had similar experiences. Support groups can also help people recognize unhealthy patterns of behavior and reduce their parent or caregiver's influence over them. This is a big one, establishing boundaries, number three. If an adult, adult child is still in contract, contact with their parent or caregiver, they may need to set healthier boundaries. Individuals may also need to practice setting boundaries with others, such as romantic partners, friends, or their own children. And that was number three. Number four, taking medication. If a person who has experienced emotional incest has depression or anxiety, medication may help manage the symptoms. And I'd be very careful of that advice, but it is there should it be the case. When should a person seek help? For anyone who believes that they may have been exposed to emotional incest, seeking mental health Treatment may be especially beneficial for those with depression, anxiety, or a substance use disorder. An adult can seek support from a therapist in person or remotely, such as via phone or video call. If a person wants to discuss emotional incest specifically, it is a good idea to look for a therapist with experience in this area, which I am. And my details are on the page. There's some suicide prevention advice and frequently asked questions, which I think we'll quickly run over. 
How can a person be sure they have problems from emotional incest? Okay, you ready? A person may have problems from emotional incest if they, as a child, usually acted like the adult in the relationship. They may also feel guilty about a parent's problems, take responsibility for the parent's feelings, and have poor relationships with the other pa parent or sibling. Will emotional incest affect my sex life? Many people who have experienced emotional incest develop sex addiction or find it difficult to engage in or enjoy sex. A person should sit, speak with a medical or psychological professional to help them resolve these types of symptoms. Will the after effects of emotional incest go away by themselves? Depending on the situation, the severity of the emotional incest may interfere with a person developing healthy romantic relationships or other friendships and cause them to create perfectionistic tendencies or set up mental health problems such as anxiety, depression or personality disorders. These problems usually do not resolve on their own and require professional help. How can a person break the cycle of emotional incest? <clears throat> An excellent first step to recognizing the problem and seeking professional help, a person can also begin to set boundaries by determining what is essential for self-well-being, such as deciding not to listen to information about the parent or caregiver's sex life, which is one of the big problems. If you were a fly on the wall and you were in a relationship with one of these people, you would be scandalized. It is important to keep in mind that healing is a process that will take time and effort. Each step the person takes is a step forward. In summary, viewers, emotional incest or covert incest happens when a parent or caregiver relies on a child for emotional needs that an adult relationship would usually provide. They may behave like the child is a love life partner. Emotional incest is not the same as physical incest because it does not include sexual abuse. However, according to some psychologists, emotional incest and physical incest have similar effects and prevent children from learning how to form healthy relationship boundaries. A therapist with knowledge of emotional incest or enmeshment may be able to help someone understand the caregiver's behavior, its effects, and how to begin to move forward. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channels. If you need a one-on-one -on -one contact call and you would like to sit and talk with me or to me, you'll find me through these details here. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.